Some kids at Central play sports, some are into theater, and some are band geeks. Bobby Richardson, aspiring young hip-hop artist, is arguably the most well-known student performer in Central. We set out with this documentary looking to learn more about Bobby Raps and find out what makes him tick. Step inside his studio and Bobby is eager to show us the tools of his trade. The pride and joy. It's the uh, N-Sonic EPS 16 Plus keyboard. Made in like 1989. It was really uh, known for his ability to sample. And, um, revolutionary machine used by many uh, many hip hop heads. So for right now, that's really what I'm working with. That and writing raps on my iPod. So we've got going on here. How has becoming involved in rap changed your personality? Uh, I don't know, it's weird. Um, it seems like I've almost become like, like I've definitely, it's probably added to my popularity. I was fairly popular Word. since back in the day, but um, in terms of like how I act, I don't know. Cause like when I was like a freshman and sophomore, I was kind of like bouncing off the walls like all the time. And like, it was, not really okay, <laughs> but you're a lot more since, laid back yeah, and chill. Since man. then, I've uh, I've definitely matured like with the music. Like it's pretty interesting. You can kind of even hear it in some songs. So yeah, I, I don't know. It's just definitely uh, helped me to mature, and then it's just helped me like uh, kind of like be more aware. Twelve shots of insulin. Deliver the insulin. Witness the omnipotence commission from a simpleton. Ridden all these syndicates claiming that they're legitimate. Well. Hmm. Isn't this an interesting predicament? What actually like gave me all my fame and creating what put me on was the the homecoming pep fest and uh, I wrote the freshman cheer is like to that Lil Wayne song Go DJ. I was like Go freshman, cause we the freshman, oh eleven, something like that, and then a bunch of other stuff and uh, like I I just went crazy like I wagged out at the pep session in front of the whole school and the whole school saw that and like immediately like loved it and they're like oh look it's a pep fest kid it's a pep fest kid so like from there in one of my classes at uh, Creighton you have the option to record so I was just like all right let's do this <laughs> and um, I haven't really looked back since there just kind of taking off. Apple Jacks yeah we getting smoked out my mom kicked me out so I'm broke now gotta get a job I don't know how so I'ma sit back and blow clouds And this is 420, my freeze is more plenty Everybody they gon' see a door in me What they ain't know is I got even more in me And I'm about to give it to them for free And if you ain't knowin' if you ain't spittin' the free You ain't spittin' for real It also be don't even spit with me, yeah? I think it definitely has And I think it was actually really, really important That I started off at Creighton Because, um, obviously The culture of Creighton and Central are very different and if you're like like a five foot six, like two hundred and twenty pound freshman trying to rap at Creighton, that'll be encouraged and like fully endorsed by like all the upperclassmen and even the underclassmen and everybody. They'll jump on board with it because they think it's sweet. But if you took that to Central, you'd just get clowned on like immediately, you know. So I think like had I started at Central, I would have just like gotten so discouraged that I wouldn't even be doing it now, but since I got the opportunity to uh, do it at Creighton, like, that was like the first real, like, fan base I had, so I actually owe a lot to Creighton. Oh, Shaka Macaulay, he goes by I Self Divine, he, um, he runs a uh, community organizing group at a Hope Community Center in Minneapolis, uh, and um, Justin Wolf, he actually like told me about it and was like, "You should check this out if you're really trying to do this." Mm -hmm. So Shaka is like the the CEO of that, and then right below him are these two brothers, Brandon and Zach, and their stage name is Big Quarters. And for the last like two plus years, I've been working really, really closely with them at uh, honing my skills in MCing, producing, and mixing, right. and. So yeah, those three men.
because in a lot of, I mean, in a lot of things, there's like such thing as like knack, you know, natural ability. But when it comes down to it, it's just like how you apply that. So like in um, like the appliance of what I'm trying to do, like the motivation of money is just something that really it's like if you are consistently good enough at this with every song you make and every beat you make, then there's that opportunity down the line. So it's just like kind of all about like how much you put into it, you know? Accurate assassin, taxing all the factions, linking up some Lincolns, then I'm stacking up some Jacksons, Ulysses in the distance, Franklin's in the bank then, naysayers doing me favors, I'm finna thank them. Exit the woman, then I enter the tomb. Spend the in between, keeping it a hundred and two. Thinking, what do you want? Well, I'ma let them assume. Under pressure. In terms of like being successful, it's not something like you're good at it, so you're successful. It's like you put a lot of time and effort and your heart into something, and you're successful. Like I'm not really that successful in terms of like my academics. But that doesn't make me a stupid guy, you know, like, because it's pretty obvious, like, it's pretty obvious, like, in the way that I talk, that I, like, know what I'm talking about, and I have a pretty good head on my shoulders, but that doesn't necessarily mean I get good grades. It wasn't like always like hip hop, hip hop, hip hop either. Like it, it, at first, I didn't even listen to hip hop that much. Like I just like rock, like Sum 41, like Blink 182, Red Hot Chili Peppers and stuff like that. And then it just turned into like a phases kind of thing. Like go through your alternative rock phase, the indie rock phase, and then once I got to hip hop, like I had, I had definitely had hip hop incorporated in like my throughout my childhood. But it's just like it was never like my main thing. But then I just realized like. Uh, damn, this is really some stuff I can relate to, and this is really some stuff that I can just, like, vibe with, like, this is just, this is me. So, like, I think the phase has ended, and, like, hip-hop isn't really just a phase for anymore, it's just, like, part of what I do.